So do you still feel the same way about birds? Today, Ryan and I are birding with Dr. Solomon David, principal investigator of the GAR Lab at Nickel State University in Louisiana. Dr. David is known for his work with GARs, which are ancient fishes, as well as his work in science communication. He has contributed to, or has been featured in Ranger Rick, National Geographic, and Field and Stream, just to name a few. However, he is also a major player on the birds versus fish debate on Twitter. Birds versus fish is a more or less friendly feud about which is better, birds or fish. And Dr. David is definitely team fish. As a fan of birds, I feel it is my duty to take Dr. David birding and see if we can change his mind about creatures with feathers. Our birding day started out on the Nichols State University campus, which is home to a variety of classic southern specialty species. Hey everybody, this is Derek from Badgerland Birding. I'm here with the principal investigator from the GAR lab at Nichols State University, known bird hater Solomon David. So we thought we'd take him out birding and see if maybe we can change his mind a little bit. Yeah. Why do you hate birds so I, much? I don't hate birds, I just like them less than a lot of other animals. Yeah. So, you know, it's a... Uh, We'll, we'll see. I, I can still appreciate birds, I'd like to think. So I brought you this so you can get some clear views Okay, great, great. It's a lot easier to handle a fish than a bird. Okay, sounds good. So I hear some stuff right away. Um, it sounds like there's a mockingbird up here, so let's see if we can get some views right. of that. Oh, so come right here. See it up at the top. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. got it. The kind of light-colored looking... Thing. Solomon, I take you don't have an eBird account? Yeah. Is that like on a computer or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can keep track of all your life birds. Nice. Well, I guess I can add what's this one? A mockingbird? Northern mockingbird. Northern mockingbird. Northern mockingbird. Yeah, Northern mockingbird. Kind of ironic that it's here in Louisiana, or is that just relevant? The names aren't perfect. Got we it. deal with what we got. <laughs> so, this is one of the most common birds you're going to see around Nichols. And they do imitate other calls. Okay. So if you have like a car alarm or something that goes off a lot, sometimes they'll like nice. make a car alarm noise. Or they'll mimic other more rare birds. Got it. All right, Northern Mockingbird. Adam the list. It'll be the first on my list when I eventually start it. Perfect. All right. On to the next thing. Yeah. There's another one that just landed here. Oh, oh, oh. something else. It's like a what, sparrow ish looking thing? Maybe a kinglet. I didn't mean to spot a bird that you guys didn't uh, see. Right away, Dr. David had a knack for spotting birds and seemed to do so with enthusiasm, even if he tried to hide it, which was a great sign for Team Bird. But Carolina run. That's cool. That's actually the first one I've gotten eyes on. I've heard them everywhere, but. All right, Carolina yeah. wren. Those are really cool because they're the fat, chunky wren species. Okay. That's kind of reddish orange color. They're really pretty compared it. to the other wren. It's gonna have a big white line. Yeah, I see eye. it. And they're normally really loud. Get up in there. So uh, tell me about the birds versus fish rivalry that I feel like you helped ignite. Over birds Twitter. versus fish. Yeah, you know, it was actually up in uh, the Great Lakes area, up in Michigan. One of the Nature Conservancy folks, uh, uh, Patrick Doran, we worked together on some Great Lakes fish stuff, but he'd post pictures of birds and he'd tweet them out. Which I guess appropriate for posting pictures of birds. And I said, Patrick, you know, we work together on fish. What's with all the bird stuff? And then it just got to be back and forth of like, birds are cool because of this. And I said, well, fish are cooler because of this. And we eventually added the tag. And then, of course, you got all these bird people and fish people on social media. And it kind of built up from there. And really, it's more about sharing cool facts about both of those groups. So kind of everyone can learn about them mm -hmm. but it's also some friendly trash talking too yeah so and we know that fish are cooler than birds that's uh it's up for debate clearly you know there's more species rivalry. there's more of them they're just as colorful if not more they do so. both eat each other i mean sometimes. that's true yeah so. yeah they do after stopping to look at another northern mockingbird dr david identified another species on campus the european starling the bird on the ground, isn't that? Is that what those are? Did you just identify a bird? I don't know. That's his know. Like, <laughs> second bird that he spotted 
Look, they're coming over. Or are those blackbirds. Oh, and there's a there's a blue jay too. These are starlings. Oh yeah. yeah, okay. So they're actually very pretty if you look close up. Yeah. They have a lot of different colors. Like people kind of hate on them because they're not native, but they're actually very pretty. Well, they study those movement patterns of the flocks of starlings, and then they've got some mathematical models that show how that works and. I think they've related that to fish schooling too, so there's a blue jay right up there. Yeah, that's nice. Really pretty colors on that blue jay. Blue jays are probably one of everybody's favorite birds. Yeah. Like if you did a poll, most people would probably say blue jays in their top ten. It's so Ryan and I were talking about how we feel like your favorite birds being egret because they're basically just gars with wings and feathers. I can see, I do like the long snouted birds more than, you know, any other birds. If I had to choose birds that I, you know, <laughs> Actually, You're like, like if we're diving this exactly, far down yeah, exactly. the hole. If I were to ever admit on camera that I liked <laughs> any type of bird, but yeah. Yet, ironically, those are the ones that are also eating fish quite a bit too, That's right? True. So, oh, well, there's a. It looks like an anole just underneath this little panel here. Oh, it's yeah. It's not moving. Good spot. He's herping too, he does it all. But yeah, this guy looks like he's actually hiding out from some of the sun there. That's a great spot for him. Yeah. Sweet. I see stuff in those bushes. bushes. Right in front of the uh, that hall there, yeah. Is that like a typical birder phrase? Like I see stuff in those bushes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Two birds right there oh, doing got a something. Baby, I think. Aww. It's a little baby monster. Wow. Oh, yeah, because there was the there was the bigger one and then. Oh yeah. Baby mockingbird, huh? huh? Yeah, that's the, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a baby mockingbird. They're really short. It's your life for baby time. mockingbird. It's probably a yearling, Solomon. Huh? Or I guess it'd be a young of the year. Might have to get the otoliths and check oh, it out geez. just to be sure. Oh, there they there are. You go. They're fighting. Oh man. Solomon, you're witnessing a bird fight. Wow, it's just like watching two velociraptors fight <laughs> in Jurassic Park. See, normally you got to pay for this kind. Man, of thing. theropod dinosaurs are exciting. So that's your classic uh, invasive species ah. right there. Oh, they're really, I didn't realize that they're invasive. They're Where from, are they from? Actually, the first ones came from Europe. Huh. Yeah. We went to the other side of campus and crossed a ditch where some children were looking at a large salamander called a three-toed amphiuma. They were worried that it may be dead, so we checked it out for them. They are nearly impossible to grab with bare hands, so this one got away. However, it proved to the kids it was still alive. You guys ready? Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. I feel like he's gonna go reverse pretty quick. Yeah. All right, that's all right. <laughs> he's alive. <laughs> Where did he go? He went back, back into up. the dead. Oh, okay. Well, like, so a lot of a lot of animals in that shape can do what they call palindromic swimming, which means you can swim just as easily forward as backwards. So it's gonna be easy to just, you know, go in reverse. We continued on, and Dr. David suspiciously spotted another bird. This time, even rating the quality of the encounter. What's this one up here? Another Good morning, one. Dove. Oh, man. I thought it was going to be something cooler. New species for you, though. Oh, true. Day, six. Morning, up to six. On the way to some more open field habitat, we did make a stop at some other campus ditches to admire some native fish species, particularly the sailfin mollies, which develop beautiful colors during the breeding season. That's got some good colors. That one, it's got some bright orange. Oh, yeah. The wild ones, people are surprised when they see pictures of them that A, they're found out of the ditch, and then like B, that, that's what they look like. And look at the colors popping on that. We kept walking towards the fields, and Dr. David told us more about his thoughts on people's perceptions of the value of different species. Solomon, so some people think that the invasive, you know, birds are trash birds. Are mm -hmm. there any trash fish? I mean, I'd be wary of saying any fish are actually trash fish. Like, there's definitely invasive fish that are problematic, but those got here because we bring them here. So, you know, carp are invasive fish. They're damaging to a lot of their ecosystems, but even largemouth bass are damaging to some ecosystems where we've introduced them. So, you know, I, I feel like calling any animal a trash animal is not fair to the organism. They're invasive, they can be non-native, they can be native, but Oftentimes people are to blame for, you know, the damages that the animals are causing. So I think if we're going to point fingers, you know, a lot of times it's us. Are those starlings out there? Looks like it. 
I hear a metal arc though. I hear one too. Ah. Is that going to be exciting Tim. for you? It's a good I one. mean, I haven't seen a metal arc in a long, long time. Tim. I yeah, hear the I hear metal arc. You hear okay. that? What's on the, um, is that a starling up on the brick there? That's a shrike. Oh. Nice, that's a good find. It's got like a shrike. bigger head then, doesn't it, than the starling? Yeah. So Solomon, the loggerhead shrike is a predatory songbird. Oh, so, like, okay. So can prey on thorns and stuff. Nice. Um, it's pretty cool. That's like a really s unique southern bird. We huh. get northern shrikes in the north, but loggerheads down here. In the Got south. it. And they call them loggerheads because of what? A larger they have a big head? head. Okay. They look very top heavy. Nice. Look at that thing. I mean, like predatory animals with big heads. That might be your bird then. Yeah, there's kind of a croaking sound to the call, huh? Yeah, so they are songbirds, so they do make like huh. a lot of calls and noises. So what do they feed on? They'll eat other birds. Nice. They'll eat herps. I don't know if they'll eat fish, but they'll eat other critters. That sounds like I could appreciate them so far. Eat other birds, eat herps, leave the fish alone. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. Nice find. Loggerhead yeah, shrike. That, um, so that seven, seven species. Call? I think so. That's it. That's a that's a metal arc. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably somewhere on the baseball yeah. field or the field. They love those open areas like this. Huh. The the meadows. Oh. <laughs> so he is on the yellow flag. Oh yeah, he's got a long beak. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's a, a that's a, a pretty good look? local bird. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to go over there, we can. It's been a while. Did, I've seen the western. Did he say he life. wants to get closer to you a know, bird? Just... Dr. David wanting to intentionally get closer to a bird was a big step for him. I just haven't seen them. You know, I figure like western and eastern meadowlark, they look similar enough to. It's sort of a nostalgic bird. I think I see him. Oh yeah, there's one that's. I, I see it sitting. It's in the, like the lower there's brush. Also oh, there's one right, one right there. Oh no, that's the dog. That was a lot of enthusiasm. Someone who's supposed to be on Team Fish. No, that's uh, one. That's one? Oh, huh. They'll have the two white on both okay. ends of their tail. Gotcha. They're chasing yeah, each other around bunch. over there. Oh, huh. They look so like these are metal arcs coming yeah. here? Yeah. Kind of look like little chickens when they fly. Yeah. Huh. Isn't that cool? They are, they are interesting to see. <laughs> one sat up on those thistles yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So what do the metal arcs eat? Mostly insects and yeah. stuff. Um, so they'll be in this field catching, catching bugs, calling, and then uh, looking for mates. What's that over there? See that? That looks like a double crested cormorant. Yeah. There's a new species. There you go. That There's that. a bald eagle. Oh. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Well, we are in America. A good American bird for you, Solomon. Good way to end it with the most American bird there is. A Could metal lark. Wild turkey, <laughs> wild turkey yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Depends who you ask. We just wrapped up looking for some birds around campus and uh, we saw some really cool species. We had the um, young northern mockingbird and then we were able to see the metal larks and the shrikes. So I think overall it was a pretty good day. Uh, what do you think for like your first real actual birding experience? I mean, I'd say we saw a decent diversity right here on campus. So. Uh... You know, thanks to you guys for showing me this stuff. I, I would say that I, I did learn a lot about, you know, what else is out there besides looking into the water and fish. <laughs> but I'm we glad we got to, you, which we still did, down, you know. Fun, but but uh, yeah, got to see the Eastern Meadowlark, which is a callback to me. It's a bird pun callback, right? I like it. For Western Meadowlark when I lived in North Dakota, so I was glad we got to see what your target species was. And with a bald eagle, so. So do you still feel the same way about birds? Or? I mean, for sure I do. I, I can still appreciate birds, it's just not as much as I appreciate fish, but. Yeah, and I think I think we can accept that. We can accept like a truce, you know, maybe understanding a little bit better, like people on opposite political parties. Like exactly. I listen to your opinion, you listen to my opinion. So. I think we're, we're, we're all getting along on that level. And uh, plus you have Badgerland fishes. So, it's you know, there's, there's something for all of us. Even though Dr. David says he still feels the same way about birds, he showed signs of being a promising birder, and we feel he may have been downplaying his excitement to maintain his team fish image. We'll be carefully following how the birds vs. fish drama unfolds, specifically looking for clues that Dr. David might join the feathered side in the future. Either way, we both agree the world is full of amazing birds and fish, 
that need our appreciation and protection. To learn more about birds versus fish, conservation, and getting rid of the idea of trash animals, check out the links in the description below. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.